Hey guys, Marcus here. I'm gonna show you something really cool today. So what we're gonna do is inside the CK editor, we're gonna create our own custom built assistance for our specific business case that can have really complex workflows behind them. And this might sound super complex, right? But no, we're gonna build them in less than 10 minutes per assistant and we're not gonna write a single line of code. So uh, for the made up business case i'm gonna showcase what i have set up first here uh, so i am now a, a travel blogger but i don't remember much of the places i go to but i take a lot of photos right uh, and something i'm really bad at is that oh i forgot to click the alt text there so and I might not even remember what this is. So I could describe it myself, but instead I just click on the image, take the AI assistant and CK editor all text from image. Uh, and this is automatically added as a context in this assistant. I just click generate. This will regenerate the same image, uh, but then with an actual alt text. So if we click source now, you can see it has an actual alt text here. The second problem I have now is that I don't really remember what this place was. Uh, so um, it is like, I, th I think the real place is called Palais, Palais de Chaillot. So I don't pronounce that correctly, sorry for the French people. Uh, but I might not know this. So what I have added then is another assistant that just gets the actual address from the image and how this works is that because ai can hallucinate so you should never really trust anything an ai uh, uh, gives you as an answer you should either give it a lot of context before uh, because it's very good at handling truth within the context but you can also do uh, post checking and that's what's happening in this case so what we're doing here is asking the ai look at this image uh, and figure out what this is but then we're using google places to actually verify this is a real place that ex does exist and we get the real address from this so uh, if we scroll down here all of a sudden we have the real address so this is the actual address of this place uh, but now stupid as i am i don't really know anything about this place and i want to know more i want to write a little summary so i have created another assistant for this so this is get summary from address so this specifically takes html of an address what this does once again you should not trust openai or anthropic or someone's uh, uh, content about this this actually goes and googles this and asking for like where can i find information about that goes into the uh, those web pages scrapes that content and summarizes this so this becomes something trustworthy and if we save then you can see yeah we have a, a, a summary of it last thing is we thought about accessibility for uh, uh, you know for uh, uh, people that needs all text same thing they might actually need an audio version of this text so we just mark this click audio accessibility click generate and this will now generate an actual uh, 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 actual audio file of this talking and saying this but since it's a CK editor it's gonna generate this as an audio player that we can use right away to listen to this uh, and there we go so we just save this and then now since we know what this is i can save this uh, i just save this and you can see we have it all uh, i hope this will be heard the palais de chaillot located on chaillot hill in paris was designed in the modern style by architects louis hippolyte so that's it. Now I'm going to showcase how to set this up. This video is sponsored by Freely Give. Freely Give are experts at the AI and Drupal. And while I might showcase a lot of information on how to set up AI, we have a lot more knowledge than what 
we show here. So if you need help with anything, please get in contact with us. So a second plug as well, workflowsofai.com is where I publish all these videos where you can actually filter depending on which module and so on. Uh, so if you haven't been there, um, please visit. You can always subscribe in YouTube as well, of course, if you want. So I will just preface this video with the article here from the drop time. So yesterday I was actually in Brussels visiting the European Commission uh, and they had an awesome hackathon that was actually uh, centered partly around the Drupal AI module and specifically the CK editor plugins. So there were, uh, I think at least five or six teams working on creating uh, plugins for the CK editor. So it was really interesting to see uh, the energy and the actual awesome results that uh, came out of this uh, and that there was an interest in developing these plugins and there there are use cases for developing these plugins for sure uh, what I will showcase today that I couldn't showcase before that because it would just be too simple to do this hackathon is how you're gonna now be able to take automators and put those into CK editor so that's where we start. So uh, in this video, I'm not going to showcase how to set up everything. So because I have showcased uh, the old interpolator that now is the automator at multiple locations. I have also showcased, if you go back and look in videos, how you can set up CK Editor in general. What I will showcase now is how you can combine the two. Um, so something new since alpha 8 is that we have something called uh, disposable automators so if you go under ai there is a new a new bundle type called automator chain types if you enable the automator module and under the automator chain type you can create any type of workflow that you want to run uh, that starts when we're talking about CK editor starts with one or multiple inputs and generates one HTML output. So when it comes to the CK editor, it's important that it generates one output. So what's cool with uh, these disposable uh, entities and why we call them disposable is that they just becomes a way around a function that you can call via service where you give the inputs this runs in the background and give, gives you back the selected output. So it is a way in the GUI to set up a function, really. So a function that becomes a workflow. Uh, so if we start with the first example here, CK editor alt text from image, these are just a lot of fields, basically. In this case, not that many, it's just three fields. So it starts with an input image, uh, which is just an image field. And what's important for it to show up, I'm gonna show you later how you uh, integrate this with CK Editor, is that the inputs always has to be required fields. So you set this as a required field, and that's the only thing I've done. I added an image and set that to required. Uh, the next step is that we want to generate the alt text, right? So this is just a text plane. And this is now then using an automator uh, uh, type. And in this case, it's the LLM text. So you just enable the AI automator, choose LLM text. Uh, we're using advanced mode in this case, and we have a pretty long prompt uh, that we have been working on a lot uh, to basically figure out the best alt text. Um, and this can use tokens, as you can see, it gets the language, for instance, which is important because if it's an entity that's in Dutch, it should be a Dutch uh, alt text, right? And under advanced settings, what's important here is when you're working with a CK editor, always set direct working, uh, direct worker. Or if you have any logic where you want to use the ECA, you can install the AI ECA module and have an ECA mod, uh, a logic where you can have, you know, depending on the value of a field, should it run or not and so on. Then what's important in this uh, case is that you have to use an uh, image field as well because that is the context in this case. Uh, and if you use an image field, you can also use an image style because you don't really need 
uh, super quality to be able to create a good alt text. Uh, and it costs money per pixels that you send into vision mod model. So it might make sense to use an image style that actually makes it small first. And when this is done, the magic trick is then you have to have at least one text formatted long. Uh, and that's where you generate the actual output. So in this case, again, enable AI Automator, again, LLM text. Uh, and in this case, I basically tell it, this is how we want it to output. And the important thing is here then that it adds the alt text, but otherwise it just copies from the same image like it was before. We make sure that the weight is higher because this has to happen after uh, the other rule that we had or the other automator type we had. And when we have set this up, you can just go back to content authoring where you set up your uh, uh, normal rules. And um, there's gonna be another rule here called the AI Automator CK Editor. So you open that, you can see all the different automator types you have. And for each of them, uh, you can open. So in this case, we open the CK editor, all text from image settings. And what's important here is that you have to enable it first of all, otherwise it doesn't show up. So you have to enable it here. You also have to enable the global AI automators into CK editors. Uh, you have to choose at, well, no, you don't have to choose an input. You, I mean, you could have something that just generates from a prompt every time and doesn't take context. That is possible, of course. Uh, because you could do something like you want to search the daily news on a specific topic. So it goes out and Googles this, scrapes those websites and write a summary for you every day. And then you don't really need to have an input in this case because it's a known, uh, it's a known context and the only context that matters there is time. So you're doing it every day. Uh, anyway, so, but usually you have an input. Uh, you can also have a text selection input. And what that means is that when you go into CK editor and mark something like this, this is going to follow into that field. And this also works with image and field, uh, file fields then, where it actually fills up uh, image and file, uh, image and file form element. You can require that you have to select. So if you haven't selected anything, it's just going to say you have to select something. Uh, and then you can say the write mode. So you can replace the thing that got selected. You can prepend or append. So add it after or before. And then you just choose the output, which is one of the HTML fields. And that is basically it. Then it shows up. I can show you the chains I have for the other, since it might be interesting to see. So the first thing we did was the alt text, right? Uh, the second thing we do is find image address. So if we go in there, uh, this uh, starts with an image with building, right? So that is our required field. Uh, then it's gonna go into possible places. Oh, by the way, if you want to see the order, you can always click on automator chain and then you see in which order they come. Uh, possible places. And you will see here, look at the images and look for famous landmarks and give them back with their name and their cities, comma separated. So this is just going to give the uh, uh, name of the landmark and the city. And then using the address field. So this is a typical place where the automator is so much greater than a lot of other solutions for chaining stuff like that, because the address mod module has a very specific a uh, um, set of rules and a very specific way that it saves the addresses. So we always know how an address field looks. Uh, and the address field then has an automator uh, uh, rule called the Google Places LLM text address finder that can take a text basically and start searching for each of these, uh, which means that we can search now then for this place at Trocadero and actually get the whole address field fill out. And then as before, you have to have a formatted field where you, in this case, take the address and format it, it in a specific way. And that's it. Uh, 
next thing we had was get somewhere from address i'm just gonna do this very high level we can take automator chain instead so first it uh, um, searches google uh all oh, right in this case i actually told it search for the wikipedia page of this place so it takes the address field uh, and searches for the um, uh, like wikipedia plus this uh, uh, this place then it scrapes this uh, so, oh no, this is what it does first. Take this address and make it to something that's searchable in Google. So this creates a search word for Google. That's how it is. Wikipedia, uh, Trocadero, whatever it is. Then in a, the link field, we're using SERP API to fill out the links that it finds. And with those links, we use simple crawler rule to crawl with HTML. And that HTML, we then use LLM again to summarize. Uh, and this is the output field. And uh, the last one then is audio accessibility, where uh, we start with a text to speech field, I think it should be. Let's see here. Yeah. So this is using text to speech with LLM text to get a cleaned output. And what that means is that text to speech might have a lot of HTML in it. Uh, and of course, we don't want it to, you know, say uh, just because something is bolded, it should not say strong because <laughs> that is the tag around it in HTML. right? So it's going to clean it up. Uh, and then it takes this output and creates audio. And then in the end, it's using uh, this audio file and just generating, I can show you here, actually generating an audio player. So it's basically telling it, create this audio player uh, with a HR in the end. Uh, and yeah, that is it basically. It is, uh, I think for people that wants to work with content in Drupal, it's it's immensely powerful, actually, even if it's kind of, it was kind of easy to, to just combine everything. Uh, and this is on the bleeding edge. I'm just going to push this now. So by the time you see this video, it is pushed. Uh, so use the dev version of the AI module if you want to st uh, start playing around with this. Uh, yeah. Thank you for watching.